you. Thank you for empowering my voice and a warm welcome to everybody today. I am particularly excited about today's session because we have the wonderful opportunity to speak with the rock stars at the University of Cape Town and the work that they do in the PGCE program. My name is Carla Watson and I welcome you to today's session. Um, on the next slide, you'll see a little bit more information in that I often, you'll notice are wearing, uh, I'm often wearing bow ties. It's part of something that I love to do. And also I'm the head of the graduate teaching fellowship at the Jake Scavel Fellowship. More about that in a bit near the end of our conversation today. But I'm sure you must be wondering, some of us here, a little bit about the name Jake Scavel. And what I'd love to do is just give you a little bit of context as to the, the reason we have the person on the screen's name as part of the identifier of the work that we do and in his namesake. Now, we're talking about UCT today, so I'm guessing there's a part of us, most of us are in the Western Cape, and Jake Scavel is also the name of a road, you know, in some part where there's lots of uh, uh, mishaps and things on the news about it. Um, but Jake Scavel is a bit more than that, believe it or not, in that Prof. Scavel um, is, is a revered anti-apartheid activist, activist for his work in education and literacy. He was a senior advisor to the former president, Nelson Mandela, and he also was the very first chairperson of the Alan Gray Orbis Foundation Board. But like I, I like to, to keep um, the rhetoric quite strong is that my most impressive accolade about Prof. Gerval is the fact that he was a high school teacher at Grassy Park High in the Western Cape. And, and that really shows us the power of being a teacher and you can transcend all those levels of influence by, by holding a single profession, which is what brings us together today about you becoming a teacher or you completing your PGCE at the University of Cape Town. Now, I want to also give you oversight about what we've been doing at JGF for this week. This is the very first time we've run a webinar series for letting people figure out which university, which university they'd like to complete their PGCE at. Now, JGF partners with four universities at the graduate intake, the University of Cape Town, the University of Pretoria, who we spoke to yesterday or we hosted yesterday, the University of Witwatersrand is joining us tomorrow, and on, on Thursday, the University of Johannesburg. But most importantly, if you were sitting here today, you are likely wanting to study at the University of Cape Town, which is a good choice. And I want you to bring your full self to the conversation today. We've got incredible people from the university who has found an hour in their very busy schedules. This is the busiest time at universities. And, and we really appreciate the time that they found to be with you today. So come with your questions, use the chat function, drop it in WhatsApp if you're a JGF fellow, email us and all that information will be on the screen shortly. But I want to invite you into this conversation as well so that you are informed and you can make the best decision as you make your, you begin your journey to become a teacher. And if you're sitting here and you're thinking, Aish, somebody else might benefit from, from this, this content that we, we, we're sharing with you today, or flip, I missed uh, the University of Victoria, how can I access it? We, of course, have presence on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, but specifically YouTube is where you'll find these recordings of each webinar, um, and uh, sorry, each episode of this webinar series. So if you need to come back to a question that Rochelle answered or that you or that's something that my colleague Siwa might have said, you are welcome to come back into those, those recordings um, via our social media handles. But that's me just introducing what the session is. You'll hear a little bit more from me near the end. But right now, I'd love to hand over to my wonderful colleague, Siwa Piwe Sobeko, who is a program officer at the Jake Scherville Fellowship and is also a program officer on the Graduate Teaching Fellowship for this year. So Siwa, I'm in the background, but over to you. I'm Gosko Kulukala. As Ukala said, Ika Malam Siwa Piwe Sobeko, and I am a program officer at Pakwa Jake's Kefal Fellowship. So welcome everyone, a warm welcome to our guests from UCT, and this was introduced later on. But if you are connecting from the Eastern Cape, Epondweni, Molongkaya, uh, before we start, I would like to give you an overview of what you can expect uh, from this webinar this evening. But also, if you have any questions, please drop them, drop them on the chat, as Ukala has said. Um, what you can expect from this evening is application process with UCT PGC coordinator and convener. 
tips from our UCT JJF candidate fellows, Utolam Zimkai, no Alexandra Hemanshaw. And also you will get a chance to ask questions and get your answers at the end of the presentation and at the end of the tips by our candidate fellows. Um, as I have promised, I'm a bit nervous because this is my first uh, webinar, bear with me. But at JJF, because we are grooming high school teachers and teachers are very important in the work that we do, I would like you to ask you our famous question. And Umbuzo Wetesu Tanda Yapekaya is, please tell us who was your favorite teacher and tell us why they were your favorite. Drop your answers in the chat and Ukala will help me with uh, reading few, and then we can continue with our webinar. Thank you, Kala. Sure, no problem. Thanks, Siwa. Sometimes it takes a little bit for some people to come in with their with their favorite teacher and why. So I encourage Alex and Alamzi to kick us off uh, in the chat. Uh, you can just drop off drop some points. So Freddie, good to see you again. Welcome. I, you were here yesterday, and I'm very pleased to see you join us again. Freddie is sharing with us that, that their favorite teacher was their drama teacher, Mr. Kotze. Kotze is another, oh, drama teacher and Mr. Kotze is another favorite. I love the subject and he made me love it even more. And it's, I'm pretty sure, Freddie, that, that the reason um, uh, Mr. Kotze is your favorite teacher was probably a lot beyond the content in terms of him being able to connect with you in such a way. I see Alex is typing, so let's give her a second. <laughs> Oh, wow, impressive. Mr. Philander, Alex, Alex says, maths teacher, a small, crazy man who lived and breathed his subject matter. I like that. That's pretty cool. Thank you, Alex. Um, I promised you, Banzo and Kale Lubao, who is joining us today. Today, we are joined by U Nicole Lesh. Unfortunately, she could not join us live, and she recorded a presentation with us. Uniko is the admissions advisor at the UCT um, J, um, PGCE department and Uamba no Professor Rochelle Kapp and the professor will be telling you about the interests of the academia. But to name few, she's interested in the politics of English, literacy practices, language identity, school to university transition. And again, I get Professor um, Kapp is a PGC coordinator at UCT. We also have two wonderful candidate fellows, Zagwa Jakes as a funda paya at UCT, and that is Uto Lamzimkai, as I said before, no Alexandra Himanshaw. They will tell you about Benza Nike or what they're hoping to teach once they qualify at UCT. For now, Amanda Yenze is that you are going to get a recorded presentation from Uniko. I hope you enjoy. Just in case you have burning questions, tell us if I get public text and someone will be able to respond to those. Thank you. Later for the postgrad uh, certificate in teaching at the University of Cape Town. So what Nicole is going to do now, she's going to take us through the application process, the admissions, and some of the things that they offer for the PGCE students. Um, but Nicole, before you can start your presentation, here at JGF, we have a very, very famous question. And that question is, please tell us who was your favorite teacher and why? Wow, it's taking me back, Siva. <laughs> um, I think it would be Clive Bichnar at Steenberg High School where I attended, yeah. <laughs> and he was and my why did you do okay. Um I suppose you just, you know, they try to make life a bit easier and try to go that extra mile. It's it's those kind of teachers that, that makes it helpful. That's wonderful, Nikhail. The stage is yours. You can take us through the application process. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, well, just to introduce myself, I'm Nicole Lesh, the PGC Admissions Advisor from the School of Education and the Faculty of uh, Humanities at the University of Cape Town. Um, Kyla, could you then go over to the presentation, please? Thank you. I think we can just start at the second slide. <laughs> Thanks.
Thank you. So many students will ask this question, how do I apply and what are the requirements? And I've made a small bit of a diagram um, with key information that could actually, if we don't get this information right, it could actually throw an application out or just, you know, of course. And um, you'll notice that I've just put a link in there that says apply online. And those are the steps that will take a student through the applications process. Those are my internal steps that I've put together. Um, it's also good to note that people PGC applications are open from 1 May to 31st of August 2021 for 22 admission. All applications are done online. It's very important to note that. Um, and then I've done another link to click here to the to apply to the UCT applications portal. Thank you for that. And then just moving on in terms of which documents are required. Um, it's very important to ensure that the full and complete academic records are uploaded on the admissions uh, portal. And as I said earlier, incomplete or missing documents can forfeit or delay an application if it's left unresponsive for too long. Uh, focusing on third year students, they will need to provide complete undergrad and official transcripts. And um, basically, that will be first and second year uh, sort of uh, subjects and credits. But we'll also expect that for the third year um, subjects and credits. But we understand that there won't be any marks attached to the third year, but we still need to see that the student is registered for those third year modules. And that's how we can obviously give a conditional offer. And it sounds like, you know, I'm saying something that's um, a no brainer, if you like, but many students actually leave that third year uh, sort of. Um, page of their transcripts. It's very important. For graduates, we, ex we expect the official graduation certificate along with the complete uh, transcripts, uh, which indicates the subjects. And very importantly, we need the credits per course as well. And uh, just to the right, that last block, uh, it's just some uh, university application processes that students are uh, also urged to go through. And then just below that, the last set of blocks uh, in applying for the PGCE the are various codes um, and as you can see that the, the HG020 code of a student who has two teaching subjects for example those who has English and history just make an example or accounting and economics um, I'm not sure if this applies to the JAGS Herbal group but for music studies uh, students will choose the HG026 uh, application code and HG027 for fine art dance and drama studies can we go to the next slide? I see we're just to confirm, is that fine? Is that enough information on the application process? Absolutely, thank you so much, Nicole, you can continue. Okay, thanks. So um, I was also just asked by Siva to answer some questions and one of them were the workplace, workplace readiness and how UCT prepares the students for the workplace. And so we have something called a teaching practice or a school experience, if you like. And the school experience is where students attend a teaching practice. We call it TP. Um, and that's a period where students spend time within the actual schooling system. The duration of TP is around eight weeks. And this is, of course, uh, subject to COVID-19 conditions. Unfortunately, um, it could be less, you know, uh, depending on lockdown levels and so forth. And then just to give you some history on the matter, before co prior to COVID-19, we had two teaching practices per year. So one in the first and one in the second semester and students had eight weeks and again, eight weeks. And this allowed students to, if they had two teaching subjects, they could um, in the first semester do English, for example, and the second semester do history, for example. But if, obviously, this is now no longer possible with COVID-19 because we are only allowed to do one teaching practice. I hope that makes sense. So students will undergo a range of school experience tutorials as well. And this is obviously with the lecturers during the PGCE program. And then lastly, in terms of evaluation, students will be uh, evaluated uh, via the TP supervisor who will be sent from the School of Education whilst they are at the school, um, if that helps. Uh, you can let me know if you have any questions on, on other than that. Thank you so much for that, Nicole. Thank you okay, go to the next okay. one. Go to the next one, sure. So another question I had was, what do we offer for mature students? So as it turns out, mature students 
have an advantage over the rest of the class is they generally enter the program with work and life experience. Um, the dear students tend to support and encourage many of the younger students within the classroom. And in, in some instances, instances, I think we they might have challenges, it would be technologically. Um, but the PGC does sort of um, provide a sandbox session which covers technological, pedagogical content knowledge, and that uh, sort of prepares the students um, technology wise, should they have any challenges. Um, happy to move to the next one. So I've just added this question, what can I do with my PGCE qualification? And just to say at UCT particularly, this is the only program that enables one to become a teacher and to teach within the South African schooling system. It enables one to register with the South African Council for Education educators, which is SACE as we know it, uh, which is recognized internationally and it enables teaching abroad. Certain countries may require some further accounting courses, however requirements may vary across countries. Uh, yeah, I'm ready for the next slide. So I've just, I know that uh, the Jacks Harville program also um, takes on grade 12 students, so I thought that this would also be important to give some advice to the grade 12 students. I have sort of spoken to the third year students and the graduates at the start of the presentation. So just moving along to the grade 12 students, I think it is important um, to know that the PGC is a one-year program for students who are currently in their third year or they do hold a bachelor's degree. Um, however, if they are, generally we tell a grade 12 students who contacts us, go do a beard at another institution, as sad as that is. Um, but we do say to them, if you are really keen to do an undergraduate degree at UCT before the PGCE, this is what you need to do. And the core things that, the core requirements would be to have two uh, teaching subjects during your undergraduate degree, comprising of 60 credits each. Um, I know we normally say you could either have two subjects uh, at 60 credit, credits each, or you could do 120 credits uh, for one teaching subject. However, the demand, um, many things are changing. And so it is highly advisable for students to take two teaching subjects going forward. Um, for example, we've actually just cut um, one teaching subject entirely for 2022 for a number of reasons. And so going forward, I think that would be the best advice is to tell a student whether they, they can still major in it, you know, they can still get 120 credits in English, for example, and 60 credits in history, for example, but also to increase the chances of employability. Um, schools and principals, they kind of look for those kind of things where the uh, employee will be most, you know, where they can use the, the qualified teacher within their schools. Um, and then just back to some grade 12 advice, um, the student would need to decide on the, the, the particular degree that they'd want to pursue, uh, one that will align to the subjects, of course, um, and then the students will need to ensure that they um, meet the criteria, which I've just spoken about, which is uh, two teaching subjects, uh, 60 credit, credits each. For example, one would need to apply for a BA if you'd like to teach English history, is it Cosa of the Cons or Psychology, a uh, Bachelor of Science if you want to teach Natural Life or Physical Sciences, or a BCom if you would like to teach Accounting, Economics, and then of course a B Fine Art if one would like to teach Art. Um, I'm ready to move to the next one. So these are the teaching subjects that we have and offer that we would expect um, a great, sort of a great 12 student coming into university, starting a degree. Um, these are the courses that they need to take. Um, I'm not sure if you'd like me to go through them individually. I can do that, sure. <laughs> so um, as I just said now, for example, a BCom for, um, to do accounting and economics, you'll notice at the top of it, um, accounting must be done with economics too. So both accounting and economics will ha have to be done at 60 credits each, or accounting can be taken with maths one, which is maths lit, as we call it in the BGCE. Uh, Afrikaans, as you can see, must accompany a second, a second subject, and that is due to Afrikaans being sort of one of the smaller methods courses. Uh, visual arts, um, 
has to be taken with design studies and um, both of them has to be done together. Dan studies uh, are sort of just requires an advanced diploma, but actually we, we prefer the degree in Dan studies. Um, as we said, design studies would go with visual art. Um, and I think the list goes on. And somebody would just kind of need to look through this. And obviously I'm at the other end. They could do, I'm doing, um, I know we're not physically in the office, but I'm doing a lot of MS team calls and consultations. And for me, I find that email are the best consultations because we, we can go back to that email and it's sort of just kind of plainly put um, over a telephone call or sort of a face-to-face -face, uh, consultations. People do forget generally. So I firmly believe in the email consultation. So people are welcome to contact me for that. Um, and then I think we can go to the next slide. So lastly, we have made a set of FAQs and there's a link that takes us to um, uh, FAQs for prospective PGC students as well as FAQs for current PGC students. I would advise all students who actually, you know, we've given an offer this year or in the future to, to look at the FAQs for current students so they would know how to prepare there already. So, yeah, and as you can see on the next slide, I just want to say thank you very much for the opportunity. And I just do want to wish all of the Jax Herbal uh, fellows all the best in the application process and in the prep in getting there. Oh, that was a very comprehensive um, presentation from Nicole. And please, Make sure that you answer, you ask all your questions on the chat. Um, now I would like to bring upon U Professor Rochelle Cup to to, add, to address some of the questions that I have for her, and also give you an opportunity afterwards to ask questions. And I've seen that there's one on the chat already. But Kala, I'll need your help with you reading out that question for Prof. Once I am done, I'll indicate. Thank you. Um, Marlo Prof, um, welcome to the webinar and thank you so much for your time. We know that universities are busy right now and you were so awesome to give you give us Ikla Shalako to answer to these questions. So, um, I know that um, the audience might have questions for you, but I have two questions that I would love to ask from you. And the first one is our famous JJF question. Who was your favorite teacher and why? <laughs> Mona Sisi Ram, <laughs> and welcome to everybody. You know, that's a difficult question to ask because I have so many <laughs> favorite ones. It was probably um, Pfizer Bardeen at, at Livingston High School. She was my German teacher, interestingly. And she just had such passion um, for her subject area and um, wonderful materials, left-wing materials, um, subversive materials that she shared with us at that time in the, um, in the 80s. And she was, yeah, very, very caring, passionate teacher with innovative subject methods. Yeah, never forget her classes. Thank you very much, Prof. Nkosi Kakulu. Um, I have two questions and the f I have three now. Now it's the oh. second one. <laughs> Just mushrooming. <laughs> Second one is um, we know that um, with um, PGCE you take students from across faculties and some of them are non-humanities, which means the writing and the academic reading and all those sorts of, of writing that PGCE students do um, are quite um, um, uh, quite often they have to to write. So, what support do you have for students who are non who have who don't have like background in humanities, like your non-humanities background student? Thanks, Siwa. That's a good question. Um, so I think, first of all, education is a new discipline for all of the students. So that's quite important. Everybody struggles to some extent. Um, but you're right. It is particularly difficult for non-humanities students and those students who are in the arts, you know, in dance and music and all of those kinds of subjects. 
And so um, I think that the the course where where non humanities struggle most is in the in the big theory um, course. And so we've tried over the last few years, particularly, to do as much as we can to connect theory to practice, um, so that people can see that that connection. I think really important. And for lecturers to provide what we call scaffolding, that we support structures within the particular um, area of the particular module or the lecture in the lecture series in order to enable um, reading and writing. That's obviously become a lot more difficult with the COVID period because we, there's a lot more, less interaction. Usually the lectures are very, very interactive. But what we have done is to provide um, very explicit guidance on reading and writing in education in the humanities. We have a specialist person from the writing center who um, has given these lectures, but is also available for consultations. And then we also have specialist tutorials for all our students, but particularly for students who might find that they're struggling with a kind of reading and writing in education. So we've put quite a lot on to try and support our students as much as we can. Um, and actually often the science students end up excelling, I have to say. They, they, they work it out pretty quickly and they, and they excel. Thank you so much, Prof. My last question to you. Um, we know that COVID troubled all of us. We had to find new ways of learning and we found ourselves learning online. What online support do you have for your UCT PGCE students in particular? Yeah, I think we're a bit better at that this year than we were last year when we were caught on the back foot. Um, so yeah, there are a number of different things. The one thing that we have, we've got an internal um, sort of platform for all our students, online platform at UCT, which is called Vula. And, um, and there we put a lot of orientation materials and resources for students um, this year. Um, it's a big part of the, the beginning of the year. And then we have various professionals um, coming on again. We've got um, um, Zoom calls, consultations with students. We have digital Sanford sessions, Nicole mentioned earlier, where students are inducted into using um, digital literacy in the in the classrooms. Um, we have UCT Wellness online, we've got the Writing Center online, we have the library online, ICTS. So those resources are all there now in ways that they weren't um, before. And so, yeah, a, it's a blended approach. We had, we actually did face-to-face -face teaching in some of the method courses, particularly at the beginning of the year, and then others are a combination of Zoom and online and Quora, where you can exchange with your, your, your lecturers. So it's a, it's a, it's a sort of multi-pronged approach. Um, and yeah, students are very free to contact us. I sometimes think we're too contactable. <laughs> but we, we try to be there as much as we can um, for our students. And we do have these small group tutorials as well, which I think really, really does help the process. Thank you so much, Prof. That was the last question from my side, but I would like to give you an opportunity to add anything that I might have not asked from you, or you can wait for the questions on the chat. Uh, let me wait for the questions and then I can always add afterwards. So let me just get a sense of what people would like to know rather than me hogging the show. Yet. Thank you so much, Prof. Carla, please help me. I'm here, Siwa. I'm here. Hi, Rochelle. Hi. Thank you. Hi, so we've got a question uh, from Freddie. Freddie wants to know, well, first he thanks us for the presentation and he's looking a little bit ahead of time and he wants to know, he understands, he, uh, they, sorry, he, they understand they, have, they need two teaching subjects where one can be studied until third year and another until second year in bracket 60 credits. So they've done first year ELL course and two second year ELL courses, which place them just over 60 credits. Would they need to do an, another first year ELL course or is that okay? Um, so first year, I'm just confused about the difference. So is there a major there? 
that's what I'm asking. It, it doesn't mention it. And Freddie, you're welcome to, to add to the chat um, to help Prof uh, yeah. understand a bit you more need, where you're coming from. You need from. 60 credits, um, and that normally means a second year level course. Basically. Mm. And mm. then you need another teaching subject besides right. that. Right. So we are, previously we took um, people with one teaching subject um, as an exception. We're doing that a lot less at the moment. People do need to have two teaching subjects. And that's for two reasons. The one is the PGC has become a lot more competitive. There's mm. far more um, applicants. The other is that it's much more difficult to get a job when you have one teaching subject. Principals really want to. Well, they want everything out of you as a teacher, but they do want you to be able to specialize in more than one um, subject. So I would advise a second teaching subject there. So Brilliant. In 2022, we're not taking people who don't have two subjects. Teaching subjects. That's very helpful for us too, Rochelle, as, as a scholarship. Thank you. Freddie has responded and said they've got a major of drama. Um, wow. And okay. they've taken three English electives, so well above the 60 credits. Okay. Just needs to, yeah, just has to count those credits. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily mean 60 credits, basically. Fair, fair. So, yeah. Freddie, there's your answer. But that, that major in drama is great. Yes. Excellent. Okay. So, Freddie, there's your answer. And then we've got one from, uh, um, there was one from, yes, count the credits, Freddie. He says, they said, thank you. Um, April had a question, which was to do physical science. What do you need? And um, Alexandra responded, but but Rochelle uh, would love to bring your voice in here too. Um, again, you know, preferably a major can be up to second year, the sixty credits again. But with um, physics, we also want chemistry as well. So I think that's that's quite important that you have a combination of the physics, and it must include chemistry. Not everybody. Chemistry. You're like a walking curriculum, obviously. Rochelle. <laughs> <laughs> you obviously need another teaching subject as well. Yes. Second teaching subject. Yes. Okay, so there we go, April. Then one more. Um, ah, okay, two more, and then I'll hand back to Siwa. The first is from Daniel, who wants to know about the research module. And I'm not too sure if you'd like to speak to that, Rochelle. That's the first one. And then the second one from Eviwe, they want to know um, what won't be offered in 2020. 2022, sorry, 2022. Oh, I think that's because Nicole mentioned, hey, so physical education won't be offered. And um, the, the research, the other question was about the research in teaching. That, that's cool. Yes, please, that's please. Yes. Students who have one method. And the only people that will apply to for 2022 would be drama, people with one method, dance and music. No, not music. Drama, dance, and there's a third one I can't think of. Oh, maths. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And what's cool. entailed there is that you'll be working, you know, two or three people working with the lecturer to produce um, a teaching orientated research project in your specialist research project in your subject area. Brilliant. So, uh, uh, candidate fellows and anyone in the audience, please keep dropping your questions. Um, I, we will try and type some of our responses on behalf of Rochelle, or we'll get the information back to you, or watch the recording and you'll have your questions answered too. Thank you, Rochelle. I had it's lovely to work with you again, Rochelle. It's wonderful. I hand over to Siwa again now. Oh, I'm Kosikala. That was wonderful, Prof, and very profound questions there. Um, now that you've heard from Prof, um, just before I continue, would you like to add anything on what you've just said now? Maybe just to just talk about the fact that one, one of the things I think that we have that's quite unique at UCT is that we support our teachers in their first year of teaching. We have a designated project called the Newly Qualified Teachers Project. And that came about as a realization that, you know, first year of teaching is incredibly hard for everybody. Um, and teachers have only, you know, you've only had one year to prepare for that, it's it's really tough to go to go in there, 
And the schools are very, very busy places. So often there's just sort of rudimentary induction into schools and, and we lose a lot of teachers that way. So one of the crises in the country, I believe, is the fact that we don't necessarily retain our teachers. Not to say you have to be there for your whole life, but for at least for a couple of years. And so we started this project and we mentor our teachers in their first year. Um, we, we have, they actually sign up for a short course. We have workshops with them on academic issues, subject specialist issues, but also psychosocial issues. And um, we visit them at schools as well, not obviously during this period, we have to say that all the time, but, um, but otherwise we'd go and visit them if they wanted us to and engage with them, engage with their principals, generally just provide support with them for them on the first days. And we have a winter school as well. We invite everybody um, in the Western Cape to come to with again with particular subject specialist areas as well. And then this year, which is very exciting, was we've teamed up with CPUT and we actually um, so we're supporting students together with CPUT, we're supporting students from both. Um, universities and they're also you know, students from other teachers from other universities as well so that's a very exciting development and I think gives our teachers quite a sense of security you know that we'll still be with them when they graduate and um, and look after them and um, and help them make that transition um, from being a student to being a teacher which is not easy and we do a lot of other things to do that as well so we have you know career development um, workshops of different kinds as well in order to to help with that sense of workplace uh, readiness which is, is quite a challenge actually to move from being a student to being um, the grown-up in the room. Thank you so much Prof. It's so nice to know that no one is thrown on the deep end after university you are still supported. Thank you very much for your time and your answers Prof. Um, now we'll continue. We have our two amazing candidate fellows. These are the students that are under the are in the Jack Scaffold Fellowship and now starting their PGCE at UCT. Um, we have Ukolamzi, no Alexandra, and they will tell you what they're hoping to teach once they qualify. And I would like to bring upon Ukolamzi, Kala, and Askele Lendobana. What are they doing at UCT? And also, any, as, a, as a previous student at UCT, because they did their BSc with UCT, what are the tips that you can give us and the audience to make the application process to the PGCE easier than anything else? Um, good day, everyone. Um, CE at the University of Cape Town. Um, majoring or my method subjects being geography um, for senior phase and FET phase, and also um, mathematics and mathematical literacy for senior phase and, and FET phase. Um, firstly, um, I, did, I chose teaching because um, I enjoy working with people and I like to I have passion of making change and making change in society. So teaching happened to be one of the few professions where you are able to work with people and also impact change. Um, and also having that vision or having that idea in mind, um, I happened to come across Jake's Revel Fellowship. And Jake's Revel Fellowship aligned with my mission, aligned with my goals and vision about education. And for me, I like to think about the combination of JGF, myself and UCT was just perfect. So it brought everything together. And I believe that I, I've, I've, I'm, I'm going to get the skills necessary to, to, to change the education landscape of this country. Um, coming back to um, students who are, who are interested in education and UCT. Um, UCT is, is a special institution. It's unique. It's one of the best in Africa. And so the environment, the location of UCT, it's next to Table Mountain, close to Table Mountain. Come on. I mean, 
is there more of 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 a of an of of, of an area you'd want your city to be located? So your city as an institution is 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 the best in terms of their organization, their planning, and also the way um they 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 communicate, the way they make sure that they are students and also their staff is in the same mission to make sure they bring out the best in all the students. So the experience of being at UCT was the best such that I decided, let me come back to this institution because I had a great experience during my, my undergrad um, degree. So that experience was enough for me to come back again. Um, to the students who are aspiring to be teachers or who are thinking about being teaching, I would advise them to, the, the, the most important teams have already been given in the sense that choose the right method subjects. Make sure before you apply or before you think about doing PGCE, make sure you've got the, the, the necessary courses or you are doing the necessary courses that will enable you to qualify. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to qualify, you apply for funding, you get funding, and then all of a sudden, you don't meet the requirements for, 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 for PGCE. Right, so that is one of the tips um, that I would give. Another thing, we live in a very technology-based world. So for me, embrace technology, take it in. All the challenges that come with technology, embrace this technology, learn from it, and grow. And you, I'm telling you, it's going. You're gonna accept it as part of you, and it's gonna be an added skill. Um, and it's gonna be very, very important as you go through your academic journey and, and possibly to this amazing profession called teaching and education. Um, so, so those um, are some of the tips um, that, 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 I, that, I, that I can give at the moment. I'm sure my colleague, um, Alexandra, will, will share a few other things that I have mentioned. But lastly, the most important question, for us as JGF and, and potential teachers is, what was your favorite teacher? My favorite teacher was Mr. Mukono Weshuro, who was teaching me geography. Mr. Mukono Weshuro just taught me life. You know, when, when you've got that one teacher, there's always that teacher, when you see them, they just, it's, they just give you a better perspective, a wider view of life in general and how to go about life in general. So Mr. Mukono Weshuro was that teacher who managed to the education aspect and the life aspect. He was just that package with both, which was awesome and perfect for me in grooming me um, to, to, especially to the university space. Um, so, so thank you so much. Um, and i um, happy that I, I managed to, to be invited to this wonderful space by JGF and um, to, to, to share with all of you um, some of, 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 of the things that I shared and thank you so much. Um, back to you, Siwa and Alex. Thank you so much, Kolamzi. We know you like speaking and we are so sorry to give you just like three minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also didn't want to, you know. <laughs> thank you. So now um, we're going to ask oh, Alex to share um, their experience at UCT, PGCE, and also any tips that we um, that you might give us, Alex, that can enable us to have this application process um, easy. Over to you, Alex. Hi, my name is Alexandra. Um, my subjects are math, natural science, and physical science. Um, yeah, that's me <laughs> in a nutshell. Uh, I don't know if they mentioned that there is an application fee if you're not from UCT. Um, it's 100 Rand for African students, uh, 300 Rand if you're not, if you're foreign, if you're out of the SADC. Um, and that's the only thing that I think was the thing that I just wanted to point out. There is an application fee if you're not from UCT. And I think as long as you have your transcripts, you have your degrees, you have all your documents before you start your online application, you will be fine. Um, and keep track of your application every month. They will notify you every single month where it is. Okay, we've closed now. Your application is being accepted. There's even a receipt for your application. So if everything is in order, and I didn't even have certified documents, so, and I know going to the police station is a thing, <laughs> but if as long as everything you have is there for you, scanned and everything you can upload, 
it will be smooth sailing. Um, like Salamzi said though, please have your courses down before you apply because a lot of people were seriously disappointed during registration that they couldn't do their subjects, especially I think most of the people who were doing life orientation because they didn't have three years of psychology. So it's, it's the tiny details that get you, but it is there. Um, sorry, April, if I confused you. <laughs> I see in the chat you were like confused. Um, I'm doing the same subject that you're talking about. That's why I can tell you we had a long debate with uh, Nicole about it. Um, you Basically, if you do physical science, you have to do natural science. There's no two ways about it. Um, that's, that's what I wanted to tell you in the chat. I think that a lot of support, there's a lot of support from UCT. So you don't even, if you're struggling, there's literally, I'm, I, I need help, Nicole. I need help, Prof. Camp. They will answer super fast. Yes, and please just keep yourself disciplined, plan your year out because if you fall behind, it's a long struggle to get back on that horse. And I'm pretty sure Nalamzi and Daniel also agree it is very tough to get back on the horse. So just stay disciplined and you should be, you should be a-okay. Because JJF is cool. <laughs> they support you if you need it. Thank you so much, Alex. That was a mouthful. It's always nice to hear experience for people who are already doing this adversity. You've had to have all this support. Now, I would like to give the audience an opportunity all to ask questions from our candidate fellows. Um, Carla, can you please help me again there? With pleasure, Siwa. I'm having a look in our chat and on our Q&A. So nothing's come through the Q&A, but the chat's a, a little bit more interesting. Um, so, so April's got some questions, um, particularly around her majors and what she can teach. Um, and to be honest, I'm not following her question entirely, April. I'm not following your questions entirely. Um, April is a current JGF Canada Fellow, so it's for that familiarity I speak. Um, April, let's take this offline so that we can follow to see what, what your teaching subjects uh, might be. No no need to apologize, it's, it's, it's on me. Um, and then let's leverage Alex's experience and of course, Prof Cap in the room to be able to answer your specific questions about your, your degree choice. Tibulele has asked a question, could the candidate fellows just tell us a bit more about the teaching practices and the experiences? Lovely. I think that's a great question. In fact, uh, Siwa, if with your permission as host, uh, Kolamzi uh, or Alex, you can unmute and just just let us a little bit let us know a little bit more. Um, sure, Kala. I think Alex is is unmuted, so you can go ahead, Alex. Um, I had one year of actual teaching full time uh, last year. I taught grade eight and nine math and natural science. Before that, ever since I was in grade 10, I've been tutoring the entire curriculum. And I've also done IEB and Cambridge curriculums as well, tutoring them and first years and second years. So that's the long list of <laughs> experience from me. For, for me, I the, the feeling is, is mutual in, in the sense of with, with Alex in the sense that this thing of teaching has been in me, you know, has been in me. It's for since like grade 10, 11, 12. You know, sometimes when students approach you all the time to help them explain concepts in the classroom and you, you, you take it slightly and they even come from, from other classes as well to come and ask you to explain concepts. And then you take it slightly and then you start to, to feel by normal. These, these students feel like I explain these things better and they connect better with me. And then that's when this connection started and I've been tutoring ever since. Um, and it's, it's, it's been a great experience in, in the sense that it's, 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 it's shown me my direction. It's shown me where I'm, I'm supposed to go. And another thing about JGF, for students who are applying it at, at institutions, please look out for JGF. I'm telling you, it's just going to bring everything together. The information um, that they are going to give you and, 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 and the tips that they are going to give you, it's going to just put everything together in order for your application journey and your um, PGCE journey to be 
to be smooth. Thank you. Thank you so much from our candidate fellows at JGF and at UCT. Um, thank you so much. I think you have heard Ukolamzi talking about JGF. Um, for you to be able to be under JGF, you need to have applied to a university. We have four partner universities, the UCT, UJ, um, VIRT, and the UP. So to apply to JGF, that's the... The, the website on the screen. It's screenshotable. You can take a picture of it and you can connect with the UCT School of Education on the website or the email below so that you can ask questions. Uniko also had offered you an opportunity to contact her directly. If you go to the UCT um, School of Education website, you'll be able to find all those um, details there. Um, with that being said, Muna Usiwa Piwas Beko, Umaka Jebe is done. Kosi Kube, Lenangom, Sundas Akuti, and Kosingos Joyna. A special thank you to our candidate fellows, Uprof Cup, for their time. Um, we know that it's busy, and we really, really appreciate that you've taken our time to come and talk to us. So I will take Izindambo Zonke, Gizbuisele Kukala. Kala, over to you. Thank you, Siwa. Wonderful. And again, thank you to, to Prof and, and our candidate fellows. Um, yeah, this is a busy time. So, so Siwa has put some details on the screen, um, and that's the magic email address for UCT. And I think Nicole's on the other side of it, which is wonderful. She's so responsive. Um, and for, for JGF, you need to apply by that link. Um, our selection processes don't talk to each other, you know, so UCT has their own process, JGF has their own process, and we, we don't influence either way, you have to apply to both. Um, I do want to acknowledge a whole bunch of excellent questions in the chat about teaching under COVID and teaching practice and 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 how do you see yourselves, candidate fellows, you know, teaching under COVID times? I mean, these are these are really powerful and important questions. So I'm going to ask Sikhle to change screen to the last screen. Um, and then I'm going to bring in one or two questions into the conversation. Um, okay, so so that I think is a, a, a different version, but that's fine. Um, so candidate fellows, no, you guys have names, Alamzi and, and Alex. Um, there are some interesting questions in the chat, and I'm not sure if you can see them, but the overall theme of it is around your PGCE experience under COVID and lockdown, which I think is really relevant, which is why it's on people's minds. Like, why? how do I become a teacher in this time? What does it look like, my health and safety? Um, and then um, a general questions around um, how do you envision yourself shaping the classroom during and after COVID or, or maybe the current pandemic? Um, and, and any previous experience that helps you to navigate this, um, this this conversation. So, Alex, I see you've responded to some already, but it would be helpful just for your voice. And we will finish at five, everyone. It's a rule at JGF. So um, we will finish on time. So, Alex, Golamzi, nice short answers. And then, Prof, it would be great, you know, from the, the, the perspective of leadership in that space of how you're navigating, how anybody is navigating this time right now. So, Golamzi, and then Alex, and then and then Rachel, please. Okay. Thank you very much, Carla. Um, for me, I feel every situation that, every challenge that I find myself in is an opportunity. So, as I said, the importance of technology. Um, COVID times has, te technology has always been advancing has always been becoming more and more important even before COVID times. So this COVID times has sort of put things into perspective in the sense that it's forcing us in a way to, 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 to appreciate and embrace technology. And as a way, technology being in, in, in this situation teaches you to engage with technology, how you can improve your teaching, how you can teach better, how you can engage with students better in different, um, in different ways because we know diversity is important. We know having different means of communication and engaging with students is important. So having that aspect of technology, even though you are going into the classroom is becoming very, very important. And my experience at UCT so far has been good in terms of helping me and um, giving me tools to be able to cope with COVID or without COVID. So I see positives in, in the situation like this. Thank you.
Hi, so I think I answered one of the questions in the comments and that's, I've actually found the online teaching more freeing than I expected it to be. And um, I think UCT is doing a really good job in that aspect. However, <laughs> I understand that there are things that face-to-face -face you're going to miss out on. Like, I really wish that I could have gone into the classroom and gotten to know the PGCE candidate who mm. actually come to class. Uh, it mm. would have been great to have that one-on-one -on -one debate, but I also think that they have in they have these forum tools where we actually talk um, about the topic that's going on, and I think that's great. As well as the WhatsApp group, which is uh, apologies <laughs> for the slang, but it's lit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that that, that 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 is something that you're unfortunately just going to have to adapt to at the moment. Uh, I see myself improving my teaching rather than improving what I teach, um, rather improve how I teach in this, what this fourth industrial revolution. Um, I think adding more ICTS applications and all the technology is there. It's just mm. how you choose to use it. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Alex and Kolamzi for that perspective. Um, I do believe you're the generation of the most powerful teachers, to be honest, because if I can't go into a Zoom room and teach like I, how I was trained. So you really are on the cutting edge of, of where this profession is going. So, so Rochelle, I'd love to bring your perspective in here too. You know, um, I think both of both candidates have been so positive about the experience when and what they haven't talked about is how hard it is. So mm -hmm. it's it's incredibly stressful. They've had to keep going, you know, as independent learners um, through a lot of different challenges. And when I listen to them, it just warms my heart because I hear how positive they are, and that's the spirit we need in our teachers. Are they positive? They're resilient, um, mm. and they they're flexible because you know we've had to change course. We're on our third timetable for the year, you know, because as the situation <laughs> in schools, we've had the fire at UCT. You know, so all of these challenges thrown up, and our students somehow keep going, and um, and they're positive. And I think yeah, those are the kinds of teachers that we need. Those are the kinds of teachers that will make a difference in our schools. Because as Kulamsi says, there are always challenges, and it's about what you do with this with the situation. Um, that's in, that's important. I think that's what's really important. And I think what we're trying to stress with our our students is the importance of their agency and their leadership. And indeed, a lot of our students do go on to become leaders at their schools and and leaders in their in their fields. And that agency, that's can do attitude can go a very very long way so I think that's yeah I do think it's much more difficult for last year's students and for this year's students but um but at, at the same time as you said the opportunities that weren't there mm -hmm. um, before and then new ways of doing and learning and engaging that we're thinking about um that that weren't there on the table in the same way before they weren't foregrounded in the way they are at the moment yeah. So very proud of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you, Rochelle. And, and thank you, Alamzi and Alexandra, for sharing so freely. Uh, you were positive. They were not briefed. We just asked them questions and they spoke from their heart. Um, and, and my computer is now reminding me of the time. So I want to thank each of you for your time in this busy period at UCT and, and, and life. Um, and, and as mentioned before, this will be this has been recorded, it'll be uploaded onto YouTube. But I want to thank everybody. And if you're interested in studying at a different university as UJ or WITS, then stay on uh, tomorrow and on, on Thursday. But since you're here, I hope UCT's presentation has given you enough information to make your decision. Thanks to Nicole in her absence. Um, but if not, the email address was on the screen. Go on and ask her, and she's excellent uh, in terms of responding and helping you make your decisions. On that note, thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.